Okay, yeah. Okay, so uh, we'll just pick up. I, I just saw your uh, comment on the chat, uh, Sid Keno. Right. Thank you. Um, okay, so, um, so just wanted to ask, uh, do you have any questions based on what we looked at right now? Um, any questions at all? You know, uh, some questions, like um, uh, I think I asked you to hold on. You know, especially about uh, divorce and all that. We're going to look at it a little later. Uh, apart from that, generally from what we covered, um, if you have any questions, you know, you can, I mean, you can put it on the chat or um, you can ask. Um, okay, no questions. Um, we shall march forward. Okay. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's move on. So we see that uh, uh, you know we, we, what are we looking at? We are looking at uh, the biblical perspective of marriage, and and so we are coming to certain conclusions uh, based on what Scripture says that marriage is a good thing. Marriage is uh, you know uh, uh, for for two people. Marriage is between a man and a woman only, uh, etc. Right. So we see that um, marriage is a union of two. Um, which means that here are two different people, okay, completely different, um, uh, different in their likes, different in their personalities. Um, but God brings these two people together and uh, they become one. So this becoming one is really, uh, it's a process. And because of the brokenness of man, you know, when I say brokenness of man, because of the fall of man, because of sin, because of the way, you know, sin has marred our, marred us, you know, like if you look at it, uh, man becomes very self-centered, right? Generally, humanity is very self-centered, right? So, so we, we take a man, we take a woman, right? Self-centered, selfish, um, you know, they, they could have all other, you know, good qualities as well, right? But basically, you know, because of, uh, you know, the personality of man, like being tainted by sin or broken by sin, right? So this process of becoming one, uh, it is a process, it is a journey. It doesn't happen automatically. It is something that is intentional, right? Uh, it is something that needs to be, uh, it needs to be, um, you know, worked at, or worked, uh, walked through intentionally. Okay, so that is something that we need to understand. Okay, so because you know, so, uh, sometimes you know, uh, uh, people are not really working at their marriage. You know, they are not being intentional about it. They're not putting in that what needs to be. You know, maybe some kind of an effort um, into into that relationship. And uh, so we cannot hope to be one in that sense, right? Uh, well, they could, they could be living living under the same same roof, um, but they need not necessarily be one the way God wants um, the the man and the woman to be in marriage. Right. So this is something that needs to be uh, worked out. Okay. So here, um, okay. Let me just share the. Um, Okay, so, so you know, um, so at the at the wedding. Okay, so before we go into that, uh, another interesting question. Um, maybe I I should ask this question to the, all the single people. Okay, so this is a question for you guys. Okay, so what's uh, first first question? Okay, are you ready? Is there a difference between, I'm typing it in, between a wedding and a marriage? Okay, first question. It's a yes or no question. So all those who are saying yes, 
um, you could just put your thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Is there a difference? Or is it the same thing? It's just a word, interchangeably used word. What do you think? All the single people? OK. Uh, I have two responses. Are, the, are all the others married? <laughs> OK. So three responses. So the question is, is there a difference between a wedding and a marriage? OK. OK, so all those who answered yes. Um, OK, Jeffin is saying, OK, is that they are the same? OK. OK, so all those who answered yes, Sid Kenu, Anita, Zelitoli, Ruben. Um, so could you please explain um, why? Uh, what is the difference? OK. So maybe Anita can. Just type in, what is the difference? You're saying yes, there is a difference. So what is the difference? Anyone, OK, Anita, Zelitoli, Ruben, Sitkeno, any one of you, um, or any others. Uh, but I'm just basically asking all the single folks, OK? So um, yeah, go ahead, Paul. Uh, Paul, you want to uh, yeah, you want to type in, or you want to unmute and speak? Okay, congratulations, Roslyn. Uh, March is it? Okay, congratulations. We're very happy for you. Okay, Paul, uh, I can't hear you, so maybe um, okay, Sid Kino, if you want to say something, or you want to type out, you can do that. Pastor, I would like to share like what I have studied for my exam as well. Like wedding, when we hear hear about the word wedding, mm -hmm. it is just used for the one day of celebration. That even like somehow this he is wed with she. That is just a one day event, mm -hmm. and after the celebration, it is no more. That's a one day event. But when we talk about marriage, it is a social institution in itself. After that marriage, when these two people are wed wedded, they start a new life. They start a new journey, a new phase of life. After that, they went into the family. Then it is a completely new phase of life. So both the words, they are very different. And they have both the words, they have two different aspects. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Sidkeno. Hey, thank you. I, I see your responses here. I think Zelitoli, um, it's a one-day event. Marriage is a lifelong thing. Yeah. So basically, that's it. No, Like somebody said, I think this was the title of a book, After Every Wedding Comes a Marriage. A okay, very interesting title. And right? after every wedding comes a marriage, meaning there is a difference between, you know, uh, a, a wedding is, uh, it refers to that day, like uh, a wedding ceremony, right? So you get married and uh, it's that day, it's a wedding day, right? You say a wedding anniversary. But when you're, when you're talking about marriage, uh, marriage is something that follows the wedding. Okay, it's uh, it's a it's a longer duration. It's a lifelong duration of uh, working out or living out that vows that we made uh, on the our wedding day, right? So, um, like if you want to look at it another way, it's like um, justification and uh, consecration, you know, uh, because uh, justification is something that happens uh, happened to us. You know, it was an event. Um, it happened to us when we were born again, but consecration is something that we, you know, we live out, we work out daily, uh, every moment, right? So marriage is a, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's a journey, right? So, um, so we understand that. Okay. So, so in marriage, let me sh share the uh, screen. Okay. There we go. Right. So, um, so in marriage, you know, whatever vows we made on the day of our wedding, uh, in the presence of God, we live that out. Okay. So basically, we, we we're just looking at this whole thing of becoming one. So we make that vow on the day of our wedding, 
And we are actually working out our vows in that process of becoming one. Okay, so uh, so this becoming one, you know, there are other terms that that actually ex that explain that. You know, we say it's a relationship. Marriage is a relationship, right? So there's something happening, right? Uh, there's a transaction. There's communication that's happening. Marriage is companionship. Right? It's an everyday thing, and it's an ongoing process. Discovering, growing. Uh, and we're coming to that place of oneness. So it's it's a journey of companionship. It's a relationship. Okay. And uh, like we said, it's a covenant. It's a, it's an agreement. You know, you're agreeing to walk together. Right. You're agreeing to come to that place of oneness. And that agreement is mutual. It it, it, it cannot happen if uh, if it's not mutual because one person is saying, okay, you know, you know, I'm not in, and the other person is saying, yes, uh, you know, I'll go for it then it doesn't happen like it's a mutual agreement right okay then it is also you know something that complements each other right uh, like we said you know it's two different people two different personalities two different likes and dislikes and if you see you know it can be very different from each other and what happens is that is what attracts a person you know that is what probably attracted that person to the other person is saying hey this person is so different from me right uh, but the thing is uh, what was so different and 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 basically that's what you know probably you know turned our attention to that other person now that becomes a point of contention in marriage right because why are you so different why are you doing it like this right the toothpaste has to be squeezed from the bottom but the other person is like squeezing the toothpaste from the top right uh, why can't you keep the clothes you know arrange it properly well, you're putting it all over the place, right? But the other person is like, hey, anyway, it's, it's just, I'm just being comfortable, right? Uh, there are no guests coming in, there are no visitors. Why can't I just put this stuff all over the place? Well, the other person is saying, you know, chair is meant for sitting. It's not for hanging your clothes. The other person is saying, it's convenient. I just put my clothes there and I take it off there. So all these kinds of things, right? So it's... Uh, yeah, you, you know, and 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 it, it's a journey, right? understanding one another, uh, complementing one another, and it's a it's a journey, right? Um, also, when you say complementing each other, it's also you know complementing one's strengths and uh, limitations. You know, maybe there's an area of strength for the for the husband, um, maybe uh, something like maybe finances are a strength, but whereas maybe for the wife, um, it's not. The area of strength is something else. So one complements each each other they complement each other and say okay you carry this you know since you know this since you're good at it you handle it for us right so so it becomes a perfect fit right um well and then of course there's unity where we despite all differences we come to that place of unity we come to that place of agreement right um, unity and also uh, intimacy right closeness um, where you know somebody somebody defined intimacy like this into me you see you know um, let me just put that i don't know if that's uh, uh, it's something if there's something that you heard okay intimacy um, into oops into me you see so opening up it's making oneself vulnerable and uh, and saying okay you know these are uh, you know these are my strengths but but these are also my flaws right these are areas that i'm working on these are my flaws these are these are my you know areas of failure and areas where i've fallen down and and these are things that I've never shared with others, but I'm sharing with you. So that's you know that brings the two to a place of intimacy, where they are not only transparent, but they're understanding one another, right? And uh, and choosing to okay, you know, I see your weakness, I see your flaws, uh, but I'm choosing to walk with you. I'm choosing to you know complement those flaws, right? Complement those flaws with my strength and uh, choosing to walk together. So, so you see, it's a it's a wonderful journey. Uh, it's as long as uh, each each are you know willing to work together, as long as each are saying you know each one is saying that you know I understand that 
uh, that, that it is a good thing. I understand that um, you know it's a God thing. I understand it's it's uh, you know it's two people and two people alone. So you you know you basically reach a place of understanding of all these things, right? So uh, and it and it takes time, right? And and so uh, which is why you know preparing for marriage is very very important. Right. And and this is one of the resources that we use uh, for our marriage preparation course. You know, for every uh, every single person who wants to, and you know, every couple who want to get married and who want to be solemnized by the church, uh, pastors. You know, we insist that you go through this because you see that there can be so much of differences. You know, about how we view marriage. Uh, maybe we know that okay, God designed. Etc. But then you go into the details and you see this is how we designed it, and these are things that we need to work at because we are so different, right? But it's it's not like we are enemies or anything. That it's not like that, you know. Uh, the way we uh, you know process things is uh, you know it's completely wrong. But it's just it's it's a, it's just that it's different, and so the other person needs to understand. The other person needs to you know somewhere come to an understanding that okay, let's do it this way, okay. Um, Next is that, uh, okay, let me just, okay, so uh, we need to understand that this becoming one, okay, very interesting, right? So since God designed it, okay, that he needs to be part of that. He needs to be part of the process. Um, many times what happens is uh, at the wedding Maybe at the way on the wedding day, at the wedding service during the ceremony is when God is mentioned in the marriage. You know, sadly, right? And after that, it's it's just each person for themselves. You know, they might be on their personal journey with God, but then together, you know, God is not part of that their marriage, right? So, since this whole thing of becoming one, the two shall become one. It comes from God, the designer of marriage. So um, it is achieved only with his help. It is achieved only with his anointing, with his uh, leading, and with his empowering. Right? Um, there's no other way. Okay. And, and so it, this kind of, um, uh, you know, this whole thing of being un, unequally yoked um, is something that we need to take seriously. Okay, why? Because God designs it. God is the one who is um, who's the author of it. So we need to we need His help. We need to draw from Him in order to walk out our vows. So if one person is drawing from God, the other person is totally not even considering God, or does not know who God is. You see the struggle, right? There's no common ground, right? There's no common ground. There's no foundation. So one person is drawing from God and saying, okay, God, this is what you think it is. I esteem it. And the other person is like, hey, who's God? I don't even, I don't even care if there's a God. Okay. Uh, the person could be saying, you know, I, I, I respect you. I love you. I care for you. But this process of becoming one doesn't really happen the way God intends for us to happen. Right, and so there is there is conflict, there is struggle, and there are challenges. Okay, um, so if we look at Second uh, Corinthians six, okay, Second Corinthians six and verses fourteen, um, verse fourteen. You know, that's where Paul um, writes to the Corinthian church, and um, he's uh, among other uh, other uh, topics that he's addressing. Um, he's he's saying this. Right? He says, uh, do not become unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Okay, So you see that marriage is a yoke. Okay, It's a covenant. It's a bond. And he's saying, don't become unequally yoked, unequally bonded. Okay, And the reason is this. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? What communion has light with darkness? What accord? Our agreement has Christ with Belial, uh, or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. 
which means that you since you've received jesus god you know god's presence is with you the holy spirit has come to make his dwelling in you so it's an unequal yoke if the other person is not a believer doesn't believe the same things doesn't has not received jesus so it's it's not like hey is the other person a noble person is a you know it it could be all that you know the person could be very good you know sometimes we hear that argument right um, we hear that i mean uh, that reason people give but that person is a good person you know that girl is a very good girl that guy is a very good guy is a is a very very nice person right uh, in what way well he he honors he respects he uh, you know he's he's loving he's caring all that and then we look at all these things and say yeah probably he's the person to whom i should say i do <laughs> you know and uh, but the thing is this the very basic difference is that um there's no presence of god because that person actually has closed his or her heart uh to god okay maybe they don't know yet maybe they're ignorant they don't know what christ has done for them okay um so uh but the thing is you can't hope that one day they will one day they will receive christ one day they will come to the saving knowledge of christ i will lead them you know through my life you know all these things people say right i will lead them i will live a good life i will show what it is i will share christ no you can't leave it to that right it's an individual choice the person can actually live their whole life and and not really choose jesus that's the reality right so so paul is very clear he's saying do not become unequally yoked okay now even with people who are you know who have christ jesus as their lord there's so much of challenges you know in marriage we hear about them and uh, it's uh, you know because they're not adjusting to each other or they're not really committing to this whole process of becoming one or they've not they've got a very uh, you know faulty understanding right of this whole thing uh, whole life revolves around them and so they're not willing to sacrifice not willing to you know change right so so you see the challenge when they when the other person uh, like uh, one person is a believer and the other person is not okay they're pulling in opposite direction so paul actually is very very um, uh, very graphic description he's saying you know uh, what accord has christ with belial okay the lord of darkness belial Uh, what pause is you know what agreement has a temple of god with idol so he's he's drawing the contrast and he's saying you know open your eyes and see this is the contrast this is the difference right so the difference is so stark and that's why uh, i'm asking you i'm instructing you do not become unequally yoked with unbelievers okay so so we see that okay so uh, while we look at the process of becoming one you know this is also something to be considered it's a very basic thing um, okay okay any um, let's just move on to the next one okay. so we see that uh, marriage is a journey okay wedding is an event and uh, it's a journey of love of commitment of sacrifice and uh, how long is it right so that's the thing is it as long as it is convenient is it as long as i'm getting something out of it uh, is it as long as uh, you know i'm happy in it it is actually a journey as long as you know as the verb goes till death do us part and it's a lifelong covenant it's a lifelong commitment okay so as people who are preparing for marriage it's good to have that in mind you know when i make these vows it's it's not it doesn't have an expiry date like maybe 5 years or 6 years or anything like that right the expiry date is till death do us part till death separates us you know it's a lifelong commitment it's a lifelong covenant um so the thing is you know some people are afraid of that saying i don't want to be stuck to one person you know what if i make a wrong choice and i don't really want to be stuck till till death do us part and so they are afraid to even make that choice right but the thing is this that uh yes we need to depend on god yes we need to have god in the picture we need to have god 
the designer of marriage in our lives um, to take us through. Okay, and as as long as we are committed to Him, and as long as the other person is also committed in the same way to God, you know, uh, then uh, there is um, much progress in the marriage. Okay, there is understanding, there is love, there is commitment. Okay, so Matthew chapter nine and verse nineteen and verse six, sorry, it says, um, so then they are no longer two, but one flesh. The Lord Jesus, you know, responding to their questions, and therefore, what God has joined together, let uh, let not man separate. So. Really, um, um, this whole thing of um, you know divorce, we'll we'll come to that. We'll look at it uh, in detail. Uh, uh, in the original design, okay, God's heart for marriage is that it is death till death. It is still death. It's a lifelong thing. Okay, so these are things that um, that we need to understand, take in, maybe re realign or adjust our understanding uh, of marriage okay uh, these are foundations these are basics so it's good that we you know come to that place okay um, so if you look at a vow right wedding vow this is how it this is how it reads right with this ring you know, many cultures rings are exchanged in some cultures there is uh, you know there's a chain call it uh, you know thali or uh, um, you know so with this ring, okay, this is what the groom says, I, so-and-so, take you to be my wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse. You know, look at this, the contrast, right? For better, for worse, for uh, richer, for poorer. So it talks about financial status. Uh, it talks about, you know, health, uh, physical, uh, you know, well-being in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish you know, some of it is from Ephesians chapter 5. Um, till death us do part, or till death do us part, according to God's holy word. So if this vow is, uh, is made with a full understanding of what it is, right? And with a full understanding of, uh, you know, why we are making this, and with a full understanding of, okay, this is the journey, you know, this is the life ahead, um, with the, and also with the understanding that God is also there. You know, it's not just the husband and wife who are in the marriage. Uh, God is also there. You know, I, I, once I I was emceeing for a wedding, um, for a wedding reception actually, and uh, and uh, this was actually from my brother's wedding. And I said, you know, uh, marriage is not between two people; it's actually three. <laughs> and my mother was shocked. She was sitting there and she was like, "What is this guy? What, are, what is he going to say?" And then, you know, I just shared from Ecclesiastes saying a uh, cord of three strands is not quickly broken, right? So there is a, there is a man, there is a woman, and there is, there is God. Uh, and uh, that's the third strand in marriage, a very important strand in marriage, right? And, and it, is, it will be till death do us part as long as, you know, uh, these three are there. Okay. So the, uh, um, it's a union of two individuals. It can it can either be beautiful, or it can be a very very challenging collision. Uh, it can be like a head-on collision, like a, like. Um, but the thing is that it depends on the individuals to make it beautiful. Okay. Um, right. So we're going to look at. Um, Okay, the next one is preparing for marriage. So I just want to stop here. Um, stop here right now. Okay, so I just want to ask, uh, you know, um, if there are any questions or if there's anything that you want to share. Okay. Any, any questions at all? Um, Okay, um, so we just quickly just recap a few things. Okay, just those statements that we looked at. Okay, so we, first we saw that marriage is a, it's a good thing, right? So it's it's designed by God, and that's why we call it good. He's a designer. And secondly, we saw that it's an institution to be honored. An institution is simply something that is established, uh, established custom or established practice. Okay, so it is something to be honored. 
Uh, why? Because it's designed by God again. And he holds it in very high esteem. Okay. Uh, we see that instruction, that um, Hebrews chapter uh, 13, it talks about how marriage is to be honored and the and the marriage uh, and the uh, 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 and the bed undefiled you know king james new king james uses that language um, talking about the physical intimacy right? it needs to be sacred it is holy it needs to be undefiled okay then uh, the third thing we saw was that it's a solemn covenant it's a promise it's a vow um, so it's a, it's a covenant. It's it's not just a contract where we can say, okay, this contract has ended. Uh, you know, one person pulls out and the contract comes to an end, right? It's it's a covenant. It's much deeper, uh, and uh, um, so we need to understand that. Then this, the then the fourth thing that we saw that was that it's between one man and one woman. Okay, it's between one man and one woman, and um, uh, apart from that. There will be stress. There will be, uh, you know, there will be a breakdown. There will be a conflict. Uh, there will be challenge in the marriage. Okay. Then uh, we saw that it's a it's a union of two. Okay. It's a it's a becoming one. It's a union, and that union yeah, it starts at at the time of the wedding when the when the vows are made. But it's it is a process. It is a journey of becoming one it's a relationship it's a companionship uh, it's an agreeing to walk together it's complementing one another it's uh, you know uh, coming to a place of unity and it involves intimacy and closeness right it it cannot be a very formal uh, you know interaction no it is it is very very um, you know it, it's not like a guarded interaction right uh, it is a very making oneself vulnerable and open and transparent interaction with the other. Okay. So then uh, we also saw that it's, um, when you look at a timeline, okay, when you look at, uh, okay, where is it, when does it all end? Well, it is till death, right? So we looked at all this. So this is the, you know, uh, an understanding, a biblical understanding, a perspective of what marriage is, okay. So, you know, it's, it's quite a lot to take in, right? And it's a quite a lot to also realign and adjust ourselves to. And, um, but, um, you know, as married people, you know, it's, it's invaluable, right? It's never too late. It's never too late to start looking at marriage this way. You know, you look at your marriage and say, okay, this is what it is. Um, this is how I'm going to look at it, okay? Um, single people, you look at marriage and say, okay, this is, this is what God sees. This is how God sees marriage. And uh, so I, I need to come in agreement with God first and foremost. Right. And uh, yeah. Okay. So any questions you can ask, otherwise we can move forward. I don't see any questions. Okay. See, on the PDF that you downloaded, there are some action items there. Um, there is a, you know, there is a section called Turning Point, uh, which is in page eight, I think. I, I'm not sure if in the PDF also it's the same page. So uh, it's page uh, page eight, which talks about, um, you know, accepting God's. Uh, you know, there are some things for single people to do. There are some things for married people to do, right? So. Um, so that you can you can actually uh, do that. Okay. Page nine is it? Okay. Page nine. Um, yeah. Page nine is the action item. The turning point is in page eight, uh, right, uh, John? Um, page eight, I think. The turning point. Um, turning point in page ten, Pastor. Page ten is it? Yes. Okay. Then I think I'm carrying an old edition. <laughs> okay. Fine. Fine. Okay, so you can you can look at both these sections. Turning point, uh, I'll just put it on the chat. Um, point, and there is also an action item. So it's a it's a um, it's a section where you can uh, you know you can reflect, where you can read through, reflect, um, you know, and there's something for you to you know uh, uh, come to conclusion, like for example, it says here, laying aside all ideas and notions, I choose to embrace God's design for marriage. So that's something 
you know, based on what we have learned, there is some that's that's that conclusion to come to saying, okay, I lay it aside. You know, I used to think this way, but now I put it aside because I see in God's word, uh, this is what God thinks, and so therefore, uh, you know, I I pick it pick this up instead. Okay, and things like that. Right. Um, so you know, uh, in society, what happens is like people normally uh, like joke about marriage, and there's you know, there's good humor uh, about uh, you know generally about the differences uh, right between the husband and the wife, and then uh, uh, and uh, typically in 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 an Indian culture also, you know, there are a lot of jokes, and uh, and people say you know, okay, if you're getting married, you're getting um, you know, you're getting getting into life imprisonment and and things like that. You know, uh, there's stuff like that which happens. And they then the jokes about in-laws. Um, I don't know if you heard this one. You know, the difference between the in-laws and outlaws is that uh, outlaws are wanted. You know, outlaws. You know, right? Uh, they are uh, they are wanted. They are hunted down by this uh, by the police. So and things like that. But the thing is. You know, while uh, well, well, okay, you can look at it as okay, good humor and jokes and all that. But the thing is that it hits at the truth of what God's plan and design for marriage is, right? So, um, while some of it is harmless, some of them are not, right? They are actually, you know, hitting away, uh, trying to erode the truth of what uh, the picture of what uh, uh, marriage is. And so uh, we need to be careful about that. And as married people, you need to be careful about that. Be careful about the kind of jokes that you crack about your wife, jokes about that you crack about your husband. Be careful, right? Because um, you're saying something, you're actually uh, trivializing uh, God's uh, idea of marriage. So just need to be a little careful in that. Okay. Right. Okay, we have about ten more minutes. Let's let's move on. Okay, let's get into the next chapter, which is preparing for marriage. Okay, so first we looked at understanding marriage. So we're going to look at preparing for marriage. How does one prepare? So, like I said, you know, for the single people, um, well, it's 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 good thing to go through it. Uh, for for those of us who are married, it's uh, well, it it is relevant in the sense um, these are some things that we can, you know, if if let's say these things are not there, these truths are not there, it is something that we can we can put to practice for our spouse. Okay, not for anyone else, but for our spouse, right? Mm, uh, maybe for your husband, maybe for your wife. You know, you 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 see that okay, uh, I I've not prepared myself in this way. Now I can uh, actually grow in this so that I can be be the best husband or be the best wife. Okay, so if you're married, you think of it in those terms. Um, okay, so let's 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 just dive right in. Okay, preparing for marriage. Okay, I'm going to just share the PowerPoint again. Okay, so preparing. So we see that it's a union. Uh, it's a coming together of two. Okay, I think you is it there on the screen? Yeah. So it's a coming together of um, you know two very different, vastly different people, right? Even when we say, okay, these people are so, you know, uh, so similar in all their likes and dislikes, even then, you know, temperamentally and otherwise, there could be, there are differences, right? So, so since it's two very different people choosing to become one and in the process of becoming one, right, uh, we see that it is, it can either be beautiful or it can be a it can be a collision and it can be unyielding hard and hitting at each other right um, but the thing is that uh, in god's eyes right, uh, according to god's word well they can the husband and the wife can grow into becoming one okay and um, it's something that is instituted by god okay so the thing is, uh, when we look at um, uh, the ancient uh, the culture, Jewish culture, we see that, uh, um, you know, and also in scripture, we see that the Lord Jesus as the groom and he's coming for his bride. 
Okay, the Lord Jesus as the groom is coming for the bride and the bride is referred to as the church, the body of Christ. And um, the, the thing is, uh, before uh, the, uh, in Jewish culture, apparently, uh, the arrangement of marriage between the two families, um, after the arrangement, after the, the, the understanding uh, was reached that, okay, this, this, is, uh, this is a person, this is a groom, this is a, and, and there's a process of betrothal, betrothal, uh, betrothal sorry. Then there was a waiting period of uh, almost a year, okay, a fairly long uh, time period. And um, this waiting period was actually used for, it had two purposes. One, it was a time of preparation, okay. It was a time of preparation for the, the, for the bride to get ready uh, for the groom and, and for the groom to be and so on. So, uh, so this was a preparation uh, period. Um, the groom went to prepare a place. Okay, the groom went to prepare a place. Okay, this is where we're going to live, and these are the things, and uh, we're going to have. So, the groom would prepare a place for the family, you know, for the for the for the wife, and uh, the bride would prepare herself for the groom. So it was a preparation process. It was also a time which was which was like a testing period. Okay, so testing what was tested there, you know, their intentions. Um, what was tested again was their um, uh, they did their devotion to each other and the commitment to live a pure uh, a life. You know, a life of integrity, a life of purity in terms of, you know, emotions and physical uh, intimacy and so on. It was a testing season, like to because the heart was, you know, devoted to the groom. The bride's heart was devoted to the groom, and and so also, right. So we see that um, it it was really a preparation and a testing season. Okay, so uh, it's good for the groom to be and the bride. The groom and the bride to go through a preparation period okay and if you're considering uh, if you're considering marriage it's it's wonderful if you can go through a preparation period um and maybe the the church where you worship at has something most churches do these days or you know there could be a ministry uh, which does uh, christian counseling you know uh, counseling for uh, marriage and family and so on so they have something like this so it's good to be part of that so, uh, you know, I would strongly advocate that, recommend that, saying, you know, prepare. Okay? So, um, it's it's good. It's definitely good. It's a, definitely a time of equipping. Um, you know, it's a, definitely a time of preparation. Um, getting to know one another, getting to know what God says right, about marriage. Okay. So, the thing is, uh, w what do we prepare for? You know? What do we prepare in, in, during this time of preparation? Right? We prepare to be the best version of ourselves for the other person. Okay? We don't you know, go through this preparation saying, I'm going to fix the other person. And I'm going to repair what's wrong in the other person. Right? I'm going to, uh, whatever is, you know, not only needs to be tightened, whatever needs to be, you know. It's not that. It's, it's so that I can work on myself to be the best person for my spouse. Okay, so that's the preparation. Right? Um, the Lord Jesus says, you know, John chapter 14, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself and where I am there, you may be also. Okay. Um, so many times when we are when you want, when you're considering marriage, you know, we are, uh, what, what is the thing that we do? You know, we, what we do is we are looking for the right person, which is a good thing to do, right? We are looking for the right person and we make a list. Okay. I want this person to have all these qualities. Okay. 10 things. Okay. First the person, okay. should be a believer. Second, you make those lists. Okay. The person should be like this, you know, and it's, it's based on your personal you know, likes and dislikes, right? You say, okay, person needs to have this qualification, person needs to have this, be like this, etc. Nothing wrong, right? Uh, but as important as that is, 
um, it is equally or even more important to prepare ourselves, to prepare ourselves to be the best for the other person. You just think about it. Okay. So that is what this this whole preparation is. Like there many times we we ignore ourselves. We ignore the faults that we could be having. We ignore all that and we say, oh, I want that person to be like this. Right? That person should have this. That sh person should be like this, uh, etc. But what about ourselves? Right? We focus on ourselves and say, okay, let me prepare myself. Let me equip myself. Right? Let me change those things that need to be changed. Okay, Becoming the best me for the other person. Okay. Okay. So, um, so that's uh, that's the first thing that we need to look at. Secondly, our emotional health. Okay. Probably we'll close with this. Our emotional health. Okay, Proverbs seventeen and verse twenty-two says, "A cheerful disposition is good for our health. Gloom and doom leaves you tired or bone tired." It says. So our emotional health is very very important. Important. Okay. So. So this preparation is becoming the best version of ourselves. The preparation is for both those people considering the marriage to, to consider, okay, emotionally, am I strong? Emotionally, am I ready? Like, what about my motives? What are my attitudes? Because that's going to, you know, in marriage is going to be very important. Right? When you interact, when you communicate, Right, it in, it involves your emotions, so you need to be, uh, you know, in a place where you're saying, okay, emotionally, where am I? Emotionally, am I strong? Emotionally, am I healed? Because what happens is, if we carry, you know, um, certain hurts, right? If we are carrying, uh, let's say, uh, certain attitudes into marriage, okay which are negative, which are not healthy, which are toxic even. Okay. Maybe, you know, it could be, for example, you know, every time it could be for, you know, it could be for the man or the woman, you know, every time this person talks with another, let's say if it's a, if it's a man talking to another woman, then, you know, if, if, if the girl becomes very, very suspicious, you know, what is he talking? What is he saying? Like, is he talking about me? Is he talking good about me? Is he talking ill about me? Um, you know, why is that person talking to that, uh, you know, to the other girl? Right? If it's going to be a very, you know, suspicious um, kind of, a, uh, you know, emotion, every time you see that happens, then then you can be sure that in marriage is going to put a lot of stress, right? It's going to create a lot of stress. It's going to create a lot of conflict. Okay, so preparation for marriage all, also involves us personally becoming emotionally healthy and strong, okay, in order to be the best for the other person. Okay, so there are uh, a lot of other things to look at and we, which, we will, uh, which we will go through in our next class. Okay, so we will stop right here. Um, surprisingly, there were no questions. Uh, I'm surprised. Okay, uh, probably in our in our other classes we'll have questions. So you know, so you whatever questions you have, make a note of it, and you can um, yeah post them, and we look at it. Right. Okay. So thank you for joining. Uh, we're going to look at. Uh, we have one more class, which is biblical preaching. So we'll take a break and we'll come back at eleven. I think maybe all of you are signed in. I'm not sure, uh, but I'll post the link and you can come in for um, biblical preaching. Right. Okay. Thank you.